how to think like a project manager. That's the topic of the video today. And I have a guest. Uh, her name is Megan O'Malley. She's from the United States. She's a project manager. And I've had a number of conversations with her before. And I know this will be a very interesting and useful interview for anyone who is new to the job uh, in project management or who wants to get into project management. So uh, Megan, welcome to the call. Thank you, Adrian. Give us some background about yourself. Well, currently I am a project manager with OD Company. I manage projects for product launches as well as what we call line reviews with our retail customers. Just to get the conversation going, so it's how to think like a project manager. And this month I had a kind of funny situation. I gave one of my team members the task to, to do some analysis and to prepare a concept. And I was kind of pushing and then he said, um, Adrian, it's April, just April, and we are going live in January. So there's plenty of time. And that really made me think, you know, am I just pushing too hard or do, do we really have enough time? How would you react in such a situation? When people think that they have a lot of time, I get really anxious and I'm like, no, yes. you don't have a lot of time. <laughs> You, you do need to have time at the end, like a resource con uh, contingency, if you do run out of time, that you have the extra time at the end to make sure that all the requirements for that, um, that project deliverable mm. are, are done. With my projects, my projects entail products, product launches or line reviews, and we're delivering a product to a customer at the end, a tangible product. Yeah. With the time contingencies at the end of our projects, that's where we make sure that the product has quality in it. Mm -hmm. So let's say at the end of a project, before we go live with the customer, we'll have maybe two weeks, two, three weeks. And at that point, we're looking at, okay, do the barcode scan? Mm -hmm. Is it what the customer wants? Is it quality product? Is the product cracked? We have to make sure that the product is 100% quality to mm -hmm. deliver to our customer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get focused on the end date. Like, oh my gosh, we're going to deliver in January. It's everything, but let, let's hit that date. Mm -hmm. And you kind of get focused on that and you forget about the details that have to be covered. Okay. So customers have requirements and scope is very important on projects, uh, meaning that the deliverable is defined by the stakeholders and the customer. Mm. And in order to have a successful deliverable, the, the launch, you have to make sure you understand completely what is expected of the customer. Right. And um, I've seen in some cases that while we thought we had everything right, there might be a small detail mm. um, that needs to be included and it was just overlooked or people thought they were thinking the same thing, um, but we really weren't on the same page. I think of it like this. There are sometimes you're sitting in a project for so long and you get bored, you want something new. And that's where you get sloppy. That's where you, you forget about the, the details of what needs to be delivered on that project. Mm. Um, and I have to take a step back and think, I really need to focus and get serious. This We want to be successful in the end, so focus. Mm. I, I know how I get like doing a crossword puzzle, for example. Right. If you're looking at it for so long and you don't, you don't complete it, you want something new, so you start a new puzzle. Uh, well, okay. I would feel better if I completed the old one before I moved on to a new one, even though starting a new crossword puzzle would be exciting. Right. I really do need to finish this one. Yeah. <laughs> How do you make sure you you keep this focus like to, you know, close off the things properly and and not, you know, jumping from one thing to the other? How do you how do you motivate yourself? You have to make sure that you've got a good list of these are all the open projects right now and these are the deliverable dates. Um with project closing and making sure that everything is sustainable moving forward, mm. meaning in the future, it, it's going to be 100% just like on the deliverable date of the launch. Mm -hmm. um, 
I work with the supply chain and logistics to make sure that the supplier is meeting quality and that they're on time with their their current products, meaning mm -hmm. there's no capacity constraints at the supplier. And how do you organize yourself to keep track of all this? Oh, that's a good question, too. I keep track of um, the open issues using an issue log right now on the big project that I'm working on uh, with the project team. Mm -hmm. We've got about 79 products that are being delivered June 1st. And I got a, a current issue log where we, we have a punch list meeting every morning mm -hmm. for the next month. We go through each item and re we resolve the issue or we discuss the roadblocks that we're having. And I mm -hmm. find that as an, as an item gets resolved in one area, let's say in like packaging, mm -hmm. it gets um, moved into a new issue area ah. for supply chain deliverables. And it, I've used the phrase before, it's like whack-a-mole. Once you complete one issue, another one has to be resolved. But Adrian, one of the other things that I'm seeing myself doing more, and even though I have 14 projects on my list, my open list of things to do, this one that I'm working on is taking precedence over the other one. So I really haven't focused on anything other than this one June 1st <coughs> deliverable. I've been finding myself walking around, making sure, you know, hey, is everything okay with the team members? Mm -hmm. Now, granted, these team members are also working on other open projects. That's why I'm like, come on, you got to, let's let's get this resolved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my issue, the most important. <laughs> I'm more of a role of a clarifier. Like, I make sure that, okay, so, for example, if a carton on the product is getting crushed, mm -hmm. um, make sure that, okay, are we going to beef up the carton or are we going to add extra um, packaging to the product to make sure that it doesn't get crushed or damaged mm -hmm. in transit? Um, just to clarify what is the objective, what's the deliverable of that meeting, and then who is working on it. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we get up from these meetings and while we all understood what we were talking about, the next steps aren't really okay, you're doing this mm -hmm. and it's due on X date. Um, we get up from these meetings and it's like everybody was on the same page, but nothing gets, um, there's no next stop. Yeah, yeah. We kind of think that the other person's working on it. Right. So there, there's some sort of ownership and then target date to resolve that issue. Well, I take things personally. And it, it's funny because at talking with other project managers, we all were very serious about our roles um, and it's almost, you do take it personally. Your project is almost like your baby. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that it's perfect and that um, everything is, is delivered on time. You don't disappoint the, the, the sponsor of the project. You don't disappoint the customer, uh, especially with the organization that I work with at Odie. Um, you know, we mm -hmm. work in a mature environment, a mature market, and mm -hmm. we don't get these opportunities all that often. So you want to make sure that you, you satisfy the customer mm -hmm. and that there's a good relationship between, uh, OD and the customer so that we get more opportunities like that. Last year when I was working on the big, uh, project, an issue arose and like, in my head, I want to just crawl under a desk. But in reality, I'm like, okay, team, let's get together and we're going to form a plan on how do we react to this. <laughs> but I really want to just go under my desk in fetal position and not react to it. Why? That, why was that? It's just, I don't want to disappoint anyone. So one side of me, it was like in fear of like, oh, this, this is going to go so wrong. But then the other side of me was like, pushing forward. We're going to deal with this and we're going to make it right. I like taking ownership of it and moving forward and just plowing through the issues. So if I summarize your insights about how to think like a project manager, there would be a couple of points. One would be to be always forward thinking. So mm -hmm. to anticipate the future and to prepare for it. Uh, another one would be to ensure clarity throughout the project, whether that's through meeting minutes or 
being part in in meetings, taking part in meetings and and leading, uh, making decisions. Another point would be taking on the challenge versus giving up and <laughs> hiding under the table. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. Um, <laughs> let's see if, if I forgot anything. Yeah, and, would... and also like, you know, the example I took, I uh, included at the beginning, like seeing the whole picture and, and using the time wisely. So not slacking, but really pushing through and getting things done. Correct. And, and with closure, it's very important to document, okay, what did we do well? So we can repeat it in the future. And what can we improve upon? Like, how could we have done this better? Um, I often think that hindsight's twenty twenty, and if I didn't have hindsight, I'd be totally blind. You can learn a lot, and it also helps with your timing. So the next the next big project you get, you're going to get your, your time constraint handed to you, and you're not going to have to worry about it because, okay, we've done this before. We've mm -hmm. got the plans and processes in place. Let's just apply what we've learned from the past, and it'll help build on your, your organization's um, processes. Mm -hmm. Great talking to you. And I know this won't be the last interview. <laughs> <laughs> I think there are a lot of more things and insights to share. So uh, thanks a lot, Megan, for being on this call with me and looking forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Thank you. It was, it was a nice interview. <laughs>